Okay, let's get this started. Very, very quick little half hour worth of um, collage. Um, thank you all for coming and taking time out of your very busy days to, to join me here. Um, I usually teach uh, these online collage classes um, and they're quite different. Each class is three hours and the classes go for either five or six weeks, usually six weeks. So it's a lot more of a relaxed pace and we can get into a lot more things and you get to know your classmates. Um, so this is just a little taste, a uh, half hour's worth. So of course, because I'm somewhat of an overachiever, I'm going to try to cram as much stuff in as possible so that when you, after this class, hopefully you'll have some interesting ways to, to explore collage and try some fun things yourselves. Um, so, well, oh yeah, my, so my name is Kirsten. Um, I live down here in San Diego, up in the Encinitas area. Um, I'm an artist. I've done all different kinds of medium from printmaking to drawing to more recently collage which I think is a fantastic way to respond to the world that we live in. Um, and so today I'm just going to show a little bit about how you can jump right into collage and really get the most out of it. Um, so I'm going to actually switch on my overhead camera um, so that you guys can see my work area here. Hopefully everybody can see that. Um, what I have down, just um, I'm going to go over some materials, like sort of your basic collage materials or the supplies that you would need to have. Um, what I've got down here is a self-healing mat. This is a really big one that's um, uh, you know covers almost my whole table. You can also get small little ones, and the idea is that these are plastic mats that you can cut on top of, and that way you're not gonna damage your table or cut through anything that you don't want to cut through. Um, the idea, be, the basic idea behind collage is that you cut things out. So really all you need is a pair of scissors. Of course, there's lots of different kinds of scissors that you can have depending on what you like to do and how um, agile your hands are and um, what feels the most comfortable. Um, some people, there are some collage artists that do very intricate cuts using only a pair of scissors like this. And there are other artists that need to, that um, find that they need to have sort of a wide array of different types of cutting tools to get what they need to done. So those are the scissors. Um, and then there's the craft knife. And this is it right here. It has, um, it has a blade that can be removed. This one I believe is a number 11 blade. And so you can have just the one holder and switch out the blades as they, as they get dull or if they break off. Um, and one thing, um, the, you can get a, these really inexpensive craft blades. However, they tend to break off when you're cutting in and they get, the tips get stuck in your self-healing mat and that's no good. So I upgrade to these um, Exacto Z series blades. They are zirconium nitride coated blades. They tend not to break and they stay sharper longer and they are also about 10 times more expensive. But you know, if you're using just cheap blades that you got at Home Depot or the craft store and they're breaking off, this might be a good way to, a good thing to upgrade to. Now the craft, um, craft knives, they have all different kinds. So for instance, if this is a little bit tough on your, your hands and you're kind of finding that you're getting a little bit stiff or it's not comfortable, Fiskars makes a craft knife that actually sort of fits a ring around your finger and it just takes a little bit of the pressure off of your, your knuckle joints. They also have one with a tiny, tiny, tiny swiveling blade. And this is kind of cool because you can 
cut into it and do kind of um, swirly things and do a curved line like that with a lot of control. So nice and clean. So that's also another option is so that there's lots of different kinds of tools that you can use. This is not a craft knife. This is a box cutting knife. Do not try to use this when you're doing you know, precise collage work. It's just, it's not meant to be held in your hand and to do precise stuff. It's great for straight line cutting and for cutting cardboard and things like that, but mm, not so good for the precision stuff. Um, okay, so th that's your basic, those are your basic cutting tools. And it's really up to you what you like to use, what works the best. All right, so I'm gonna just get started here transforming some images. Um, I called this transformative collage because basically the idea behind collage is to alter an image. And once you, when you alter it, it changes your perspective of it, how you perceive it and what it becomes. An image um, can mean lots of different things. It can have memories attached to it, a lot of different meanings. Um, it can also just be an object that can be you know, used in a composition. But once it starts becoming, getting transformed, we see it completely differently. The meaning becomes something different. But at the same time, it's usually recognizable for what it originally was. And so we're sort of toggling back and forth between what we know it is and what it has become. So that gets kind of interesting. So, Another tool you would let, want to have would be a ruler. Um, and this is great for just making straight cuts. One of the cool things about having this kind of um, self-healing mat is that it's usually got these lines on it. So I'm going to do some very simple straight cut, straight cuts into this image and just change it. So just going to cut straight down like that. I'm not too worried about making it even. So I've got it cut into three little pieces here. But then I'm going to switch it around like this. And it becomes something different. <laughs> Um, you know, the landscape becomes fragmented. And what I love to do is when I'm transforming these images and cutting into them and changing them is noticing how I feel and what I'm seeing and how, how I feel about what I'm seeing. So that's one very, very simple way of changing an image. I'll just put that off to the side. It can also be done with a portrait. And I use images um, <clears throat> from magazines. It's just what I have available right now. So what I can do here is actually, I made some marks on, already on, the, um, on this image just ahead of time because this is sort of like a cooking show and I need to uh, line this up here. And so I need to kind of move through things quickly, but I'm gonna cut here, because you know, the eyes are the mirror of the soul. So that would be a pretty obvious place to make a cut. Oops. So now her eyes have been cut out and that's sort of interesting of itself, but I can also flip it over and make something different here and line it up and see what happens. Um, I can continue to make cuts into this image, this portrait. And once again, you know, I just, I um, made these marks ahead of time so that I could save a little bit of time. Oops. 
Is it as far as that went? So there's one way of doing it is kind of shifting things around so they don't quite line up anymore. Breaking and fragmenting the portrait, something like that. And that becomes something very different. Another interesting thing is to stagger stuff. You know, what happens when things are in the right order, but they're not really like that. So that that makes that kind of makes things sort of interesting. It's just to sort of put in cuts and reorder stuff. And this um, this kind of collage is also referred to as um, nothing added and nothing taken away because you can just take one image and transform it by cutting into it and then rearranging it. So we'll just put that one off to the side. Now you can also cut out geometric shapes. So one obvious shape is a circle. And if you've done a decent job of cutting it out, which I haven't really done. I, I took a protractor and um, this tool here, I did an outline on a piece of cardstock. And so this is good and cut this out. So this is going to be my template, my circle template. And so I'd like to play with a landscape here. And so um, I'm going to put down this circle kind of in the center. And then carefully use my craft knife to cut around. And of course I drank way too much coffee this morning, so my cutting isn't as uh, precise as I would like it to be, but uh, you'll get the general idea. Okay, so there we go. We've got this circle cut out and now I can play with it. And once again, change. Invert it. And then something, you know, if it changes into something else, I can try to line up the horizon lines. <laughs> And kind of see what happens. So that's another quick way of, of changing that um, with a circle. And the cool thing about a circle is that you can rotate it any which way like that. You can even do something that's just a little bit off kilter. So, and once again, that idea can also be used for, for a portrait. I could use this and cut out circle to alter a face. And I find um, altering faces to be very, very interesting because as humans, we have, um, we're designed to recognize faces and try to make sense out of the person's expressions and so if you alter the face in some way, we're, we're really playing with that ability. So I've got this circle here. I can just turn that around. And that gets like, just kind of really creepy and weird. <laughs> and that's just, that's just because of our instinct the, the way we're hardwired, our brain is hardwired to, to read faces. So if you make something a little bit off, our brain is really trying to figure out what to do with that. So that's just another quick way to do that. And I could do this like all over her face, put down these circles and have a lot of fun with it. 
Um, so I'll just put that aside. Now, another shape to use is a triangle. And this one is just an equilateral triangle that I cut out. And once again, I'm using an equilateral triangle because it's equal on either side, all sides. And so can really, really play with this. So here's, here's a landscape. And, you know, maybe I will just put this down here and cut it out. All right, so that's cut out. And I could put it like this or like that. But what might be interesting is if I continue with using the equilateral triangle and line it up against this edge here. And continue cutting out carefully. that. Maybe I can switch things around and reorder it and continue cutting out, lining this up, get these out of the way with this edge here. Yeah, another tool in collage is uh, good reading glasses so that you can actually see what you're doing. Uh, some of the cuts get very precise. So you can start playing with that. Reordering elements. And then keep going around. Get this out of the way. Like so. And one of the really cool things um, that I like about using images from magazines or books is that they're not precious. Um, and so it, that gives me the freedom to, to cut them up and to transform them how I want to. And it's, it's not something that I need to save or to keep or to maintain, it's, it's something that I do not necessarily have any attachment to. So I can do with it what I want. And I can continue to go around this whole image using these, these different shapes if I wanted to and create, create something kind of cool. Um, you know, I can even take some of these out, sub them out and put something else behind it, you know, a different backdrop, like so. And maybe something like that, you know, and just kind of play with the different colors and textures and, and, and you know, and shapes and, um, and once again, it's just an exploration to see what happens and to see when I see something that's been changed, how do, what do I think about it? And, and how does it, you know, what seems to, to be popping out at me? So that's with the equilateral triangle. Another thing that you can use other than um, cutting out templates is you can take some tracing paper and, um, and, you know, and draw out a design or shapes that you want to cut out. And that's really handy because for instance, if I'm doing a portrait and I'd like to, to cut out, you know, some complicated shapes, it's nice that I can put this down and figure out exactly where 
I want it to go. Like for instance, it's kind of important that the eyes do not get cut up. So in this case here, I can just cut along the lines. Hopefully. <laughs> The trick is to hold it down in place. And this is not going to be totally precise, <laughs> but you're going to get an idea of what is possible. And sometimes using these, these um, geometric shapes are really fun because the cutting out goes very quickly. Um, you know, I could, it's much easier to cut along a straight line than it is trying to cut out a circle or something curvy. Um, so it just uh, really allows you to make a lot of drastic changes to an image very, very quickly in a short amount of time. Okay. So I think I might have chopped this up in a weird way. But anyway, I can take these now and put them down in a very, very different order. Maybe even switching from, oops, from one side of the image to the other. I think I had an eye up here like that. And I'm changing the orientation of these images. I'm just sort of okay, so that's kind of rough, but get an idea of how much that changes things. It's almost like a prism effect. And that can be moved around and changed in lots of different ways. So that's what you can do with one image and take a lot, like just start cutting it up and rearranging um, how it goes back down into, into place. So I'm gonna actually show you sort of um, something else because what you can also do is when you cut an image out of its original context, like for instance, these little people here, if I take them, if I, and I cut these out ahead of time because I knew that I'd be running out of time. If I take them out, you know, all of a sudden that's something different than what that whole picture was before. So, oh no, I didn't get his last little leg there. So here they are. They are free from their, their original environment. They are up now out of context and I can do something with them. So one thing is to change the background like so what happens here if I put them in outer space? This becomes something completely different. And, you know, a little bit fun, a little bit whimsical, kind of weird. I mean, what are they doing there? So it starts telling a different story. Likewise, I can put them on a banana. And that's that becomes something completely different. So this is, you know, obviously a combination of two different images, you know, of one of the, these two figures from this old photograph and 
from an ad for Chiquita Bananas. But it gets kind of fun. And then who knows? Maybe I want them to be riding their banana in space. Like that. And then here, one thing, um, one thing I really like about using a craft knife is that when I cut something out, I actually am left with a silhouette. So that becomes kind of interesting, taking that space, you know, if they're, they're in space there. But then what happens when I put her back? I don't know, I'm feeling a sense of kind of loss or absence, and that's very powerful. Or maybe it's him. He's back there. So this is this is also something that can be played with quite a bit. You know, for instance, I have a, a window that's cut out, very ornate, but it changes depending on what kind of background I put. I can put it against a little mountainous backdrop and play with where it's going to go. Something a little bit more moody here. Maybe a sense of, gives it maybe a sense of mystery. But those are two, you know, very different images coming from very different um, contexts. And somehow they work together to create something new. You know, here's something a little bit more complex that I cut out, but I can overlay that onto a picture like this. And depending on how I line it up, can do and say different things. So, yeah, so that's really quick blast through lots of different ways that you can cut into um, different images and, and create a collage. Um, as for gluing it down, because that's also a very important part, um, I'll just briefly um, kind of go through some basics. You can always use a glue stick. This is, it's acid free, it's inexpensive. I think it's less than $2 for one of these tubes. You just smear the glue on, like for instance, I take um, a piece of wax paper to protect my work surface, this, and take my glue stick, go like this and this way. When I go off the edges of the image, I'm not getting it onto my work surface. And also the wax paper keeps this gluey thing from sticking onto anything. So put it down. And then I can even, now that I've got glue all over my fingers, I take the wax paper and I can use that to press it into place. So there you go. It's a window into another world. Okay, so I'm going to um, and the spotlight for, for this one. But did anybody have any questions about anything? Would you I think to... I'd like to, oh, excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. Now, now two of us, I'll go real quickly. Sure. Uh, are there images on your website of finished projects? I have this curiosity to see them in the end. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, my website is kirstenfrancis.com. Um, I'm also on Instagram um, at kirstenfrancis underscore art. And um, finished stuff is on my website works in progress, small little pieces, um, things like that are on my Instagram feed. And okay, you can thank you. Yeah. Oh, you can always contact me through through that if you have any questions or, or anything like that. Thank you.
Yeah, you're welcome. Did anyone else have any any questions? What? I was yes. really interested in the um, tool that you used that was like more ergonomic. Um, is oh. it possible for us to get an email with the tools you recommended? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, I think, um, or actually I should ask you, Amanda. <laughs> I'm used to doing that with, um, with my classes. Um, I usually send them a, uh, a list of whatever we went through <clears throat> in the class so that people don't have to feel like they have to take notes. Um, but yeah, I'd be happy to send you a list of all the tools that, that I was using, as well as a little bit more about um, like adhesives and, and stuff like that. I think um, what might be easier um, is the email I sent out uh, probably about 45 minutes ago has Kirsten's email address in it. So if you want to just email her and then I'm not spamming everybody with, you know, too much information. So yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds like a good plan. Kirsten, I have a yeah. question. Yeah. Do you coat your um, images after your collage is finished with anything to protect them? Um, no, no. I um, I only would do that if if it was being mounted on like a, a wood panel and I wasn't expecting it to be framed. Um, but I do a lot of dimensional collage and so um, it doesn't really work too well for it to be coated. However, if you do need to coat it um, and you protect it, um, matte gel medium is really good and that gives it some UV protection. The only issue is is that it can change the look of the, the paper images and sometimes if it can make them buckle. Mm -hmm. you, have to be, you have to basically be able to put that stuff down and then flatten down your your images to make sure that they don't get any air bubbles or buckling. Okay, so, thank you. Yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna put in my my email um, if I can type the address just because somebody. Yeah, definitely. Um, feel free to email me, and I'm happy to um, to kind of. Uh, you know, have a list of all the, the supplies and, and things like that. And um, I'm be delighted to answer any questions that you have. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so hopefully this will set, you know, give you some ideas, allow, give you some room to explore and to start playing around. Um, it's pretty open-ended. There's no right or wrong way to do collage. It is a very personal, um, unique medium, and you can pretty much do with it whatever you w will. So, mm -hmm. yeah. okay, great. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Kirsten. Thank you. Uh, it was Bye. so nice to see you all. Bye, Amanda. Kirsten. Bye. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye.